morning guys Ozzy with end times prophecy watch and today is March 26 2019 and this is gonna be today's end times news update we got a lot going on wars rumors of wars um, Antichrist news Middle East peace treaty I want to give a special thanks to um, our brothers and sisters who because um, I'm including a couple of clips that they did create their watchmen on the wall as well and so you know um, Quite a few of us are paying attention and we're uploading and sharing a lot of this really interesting exciting news so that we can just you know throw it out and um into the atmosphere and hopefully it'll fall on 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 the eyes of many many who have not come to christ yet and many of you who are in christ that you might be encouraged edified and strengthened in your walk uh, with the lord and savior jesus christ so with that being said let's let's get started that don't even accept Jesus as the Messiah, don't even accept New Testament scriptures, they are continually in the headline news coming out of Israel saying that they see the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38 right before their eyes. They're watching it build. And these are, these are Orthodox Jewish rabbis. Of course, a lot of Christian and, and, and Messianic Christian prophecy watchers and prophecy experts, they, they see the same thing. And you know, we're out there talking about it. But, but, that's, but that's what's happening. It, it, the whole center of the Word of God, the whole center of God's plan, the whole center of the gospel, the whole center of the coming rule and reign of Jesus Christ, the whole center of world politics, eventually somehow focuses right back in that area. There's something very magnetic, spiritually, demonically magnetic about that area. And, and again, we're living in the days for the first time in 2,600 years. Jerusalem, boom. Reports coming in now that Russia has two Air Force planes transporting dozens of troops and equipment to Venezuela's main airport over the weekend. As opposition leader Juan Guaido tells the media that he's closer than ever to taking full control of the country. RT's Rachel Blevins is live in the newsroom for us with the latest details. Rachel. As the United States continues to push for Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro to resign, one of the leader's most important allies is now reportedly sending in reinforcements. Reports claim that two Russian military planes landed at Venezuela's main airport on Saturday, carrying around 100 troops and 35 tons of equipment. Diplomatic sources in Caracas said that Russian military personnel arrived to take part in bilateral consultations as Russia and Venezuela Venezuela have a number of contracts that are being implemented, including contracts on military and technical cooperation. Russia's Ministry of Defense has yet to comment. This comes as opposition leader Juan Guaido tells the media that he believes Maduro's administration has reached its final stage because it has lost the opportunity to, quote, finance political blackmail. Although Venezuela's military has stood by Maduro, Guaido claimed that around 80 percent of military members are convinced of the need for a change in Venezuela and that his team has been meeting with high-ranking members.
we begin with the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard sending ships throughout the South China Sea once again. Now, the U.S. has increased its presence in the disputed waters in recent months, claiming they are open waters, but China disagrees. RT Sarah Montez de Oca joins me with the details. Sarah, this is very interesting information, and this isn't the first time the United States has done this. That's right. Scotty, this is the third month in a row and the fifth time in just six months that the U.S. Navy has sent some of their Navy destroyers through the very contentious waters. Now, the USS Curtis Wilbur and the Coast Guard Cutler USCGC Bert Hall conducted maneuvers on Sunday through early Monday morning. Now, China protested U.S. warships sailing through the Taiwan Strait. Now, this is a 100 mile wide strait between China and mainland and Taiwan. A U.S. 7th Fleet spokesman, Lieutenant Joseph Cayley, said they're abiding by international law. The ship's transit through the Taiwan Strait demonstrates the U.S. commitment to a free and open Indo Pacific. The U.S. will continue to fly, sail, and operate anywhere international laws allow. But this didn't go without a Chinese response. Earlier today, China's foreign ministry spokesman told reporters it's paying very close attention to U.S. ships near the contended waters. One of the things we like to do on this newscast, which I know you like because, well, you've told us you like this, is the fact that we're constantly searching for stories that you essentially won't see anywhere else. We think we have found that again with a trend story. Here's what we have found out. The number of encounters, right, between Russian fighter jets and U.S. or NATO reconnaissance or spy planes, as they're often called, uh, seems to be increasing of late. This is, this is fascinating. That's according to reports that we have been monitoring both from U.S. and Russian military sources. So what I, what I want to do is I, I want to take you through some of the video, some of the video that has been coming in which seems to reflect this, right? Here we go. L look at this. Look at the speed with which this Russian SU-27 uh, fighter jet, you see it right there on the right, right? It's going to intercept and escort away this U.S. RC-135, uh, right? Uh, that, that, you, you're looking at it right there? This is over the Baltic Sea, by the way. This is over the Baltic Sea right near the Russian border. And, and as you might expect, Russia, look, like any other country, it gets a little hinky about somebody encroaching, you know, up on its uh, border, up on its space, as uh, young people like to say. So this is why Russian fighter jets seem to be playing almost this constant game of cat and mouse with NATO planes. Here's another example. Put this one up if you can, Kev. This is a U.S. B-52. It's heading right for the Russian Federation airspace. Russia immediately scrambles uh, two more uh, SU-27s, is what the fighter jets are called. The fighter jets then seem to like, like, like head off. Uh, this uh, strategic bomber, which is what the Russians are calling it, it heads off the strategic bomber uh, and then makes it go into like another direction. Yeah, you're watching this? Fascinating, right? So the question is, why are we seeing more and more of these types of uh, chases, right? And what's it say about U.S. Russo relations? This is the news with Rick Sanchez. We keep you connected with our world because. We believe it's time to do news again. So there you have it, brethren. Just some of today's news, as you can see, uh, much of the news that is being reported out there does indicate that we are very close to 
uh, a war amongst nations, uh, a very bloody war that we know will take place um, in the not too distant future. Now, um, to end this news update, uh, yeah, I would like to end it with this message in regards to the imminent return of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, the word imminent means likely to happen at any moment, impending. When we speak of the imminence of Christ's return, we mean that he could come back at any moment. There is nothing more in Bible and biblical prophecy, brethren, that needs to happen before, before Jesus uh, comes again. The imminence of Christ's return is generally taught among evangelicals with some disagreements according to one's view of dispensationalism and whether one holds a pre, mid, or post-tribulational view of the rapture. Jesus spoke of his return repeatedly during his ministry, which naturally prompted questions from his disciples. One of their questions was, when will these things happen? Mark 13, 4. Jesus responded, of that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven or the Son, but the Father alone. Take heed, keep on the alert, for you do not know when the appointed time will come. Verses 32 through 33. It is important to remember in any discussion of eschatology that God does not intend for us to fully understand the timing of his plans. However, the Bible says that Jesus' return is near and we are to wait eagerly for it. Romans 8, 19 through 25, 1 Corinthians 1 through 7, Philippians 4, 5, and also Jude 21. James encourages us to be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. James 5, 8, also Revelation 1 through 3, and uh, Revelation 22, 10, I'm sorry, Revelation what, uh, chapter 1, verse 3, and also chapter 22, verse 10, uh, also say that the time is near. Jesus taught his disciples to watch for his return. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour you do not expect him, Luke 12, 40. The command to be ready implies imminence. Throughout the New Testament, the church is told to be ready. Philippians 3.20, also Titus 2.13, and 1 Thessalonians 5.6. If the disciples and the early church were to expect the coming of the Lord at any time, brethren, how much more should we be waiting in keen expectation? With everything that is taking place and going on in the world, we cannot ignore a lot of this that is being reported. And it, again, it is basically corroborating and confirming that the Bible is up to date uh, in all its prophecies and predictions, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, the Bible foretells the future. And we who are in the body of Christ know the future. We know specific, uh, very specific events that are going to take place as we now see them uh, uh, unfolding in real time before our very own eyes, brethren. At this point, it is good to distinguish between the second coming of Christ proper and the rapture of the church. The second coming of Christ when he defeats his enemies and sets up his kingdom will not occur until after certain other end, time, uh, end times events take place. Before the Lord Jesus Christ comes back to earth, sets foot on earth, there are very specific events that must take place first. As most of you guys should know. Okay? Including... The tribulation, everything that's going to occur and take place during the tribulation. Um, you can read Matthew 24, 15 through 30. Uh, also Revelation chapters 6 through 18. So, so therefore the second coming is not imminent. However, according to the pre-tribulational view, the, and I, I understand that many do disagree and that's perfectly fine. We don't have to go at each other's throats because the truth of the matter is that many of us are, are God-fearing, uh, loving uh, people who honor and serve the Lord genuinely, lovingly, and wholeheartedly. We stand on the rock of our salvation. We understand that He is the Christ, the Son of the true living God, and that nobody can come to the Father except through Him. That's the gospel. And we st stand on that 110%. You know, as long as we don't disagree on that, then we're fine. Because otherwise, we'd be following a different gospel. When it comes, however, to the timing of the return of Jesus Christ in the air, that is where we disagree. But again, we can disagree peacefully and respectfully. So, um, 
according, uh, as I was saying, according to the pre-tribulation of you, the rapture will take place before the tribulation. The rapture could uh, occur at any moment. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18 and 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 54. You can read those and can rightly be called imminent. So our salvation is ready to be revealed in the last time. Jesus could return for his own at any moment. And that event will set in motion the series of events detailed in Revelation 6 through 18. Like the five wise virgins in Jesus, um, the parable, Jesus' parable, Matthew 25, 1 through, uh, 1 through 13. We must be ready, brethren. We must be ready. Now is not the time to be asleep and to be messing around as if we were in the days of Noah, because the truth is that we are in the, um, in the days of Noah now. And there are a lot of people, even some quote-unquote Christians, who are going about their business one foot set on this world and one in the kingdom that makes you lukewarm. And because you're lukewarm, you're going to be spit out. And this is the word of God. Accept it or you're rejected. God says what he means, and he means what he said. He doesn't play games. We've said this before. He does not play games. The Lord means business. It cost the father the life of his son a horrible death so that through him we might be saved. This is not a joke, people. So we must be ready. Be on alert, says Matthew 25, 13, and I'll end it with this. For you do not know the day or the hour. Thanks again for watching, guys, and God bless you.